Hey guys, what's going on? I am here standing in what used to be a lake. Now there was one house on this lake, it was a private lake called Hidden Lake, and we're in Seattle City Limits, or just north of it, about a block or two, uh, depending on the year and the map and the annexation route that you look at. But this creek here is called Boeing Creek, or Boeing uh, River, Boeing Brook. It has several names as well. And it was backed up into a lake for a long time. It was turned into what they called Hidden Lake. Well now, it has been unplugged, and this is this really cool ravine that I've showed you in the past, and kind of kept the location a secret. Well now they're gonna open it up as more of a park, and they're hoping that the Chinook and the Chum and the Cutthroat Salmon return. Uh, because there was a dam here, uh, this was, like I said, right where I'm at, I would have been under about 15 feet of water in this kind of small private six or seven acre lake. Well, now the stream is back. And this is what it looks like as they are trying to rehabilitate the stream. They've brought in big uh, bouldery rocks uh, and also repurposed them from around the site. And then they've planted kind of a wetland area around the edges uh, for a few acres, a few football fields worth all the way around that used to all be lake. And they're letting that kind of drain back out and they're trying to get the water back into this main channel of the creek. And uh, this creek is named after the Boeing company, the Boeing family, uh, just like that makes the airplanes. But right now what we're seeing is the creek is not very shaded and it's getting a bunch of algae in it which is not normal for creeks around here, especially when they're flowing like this because the creek is nice and cool. It's probably 55, 65 degrees, somewhere in there. But there used to be these massive trees that would shade it and now they're gone. So now we have to get new growth and they've planted a new grove of trees right next to it in order to hopefully facilitate that but also the hillside is still draining a lot of uh, all sorts of water because it's a good 250 foot climb in elevation right here uh, just on the other side of these trees uh, up to the Shoreline Community College and that means that there's a lot of water draining just out of groundwater and out of the roots of trees and everything else coming down the hillside so there's also this kind of trench where they're building another almost like pond or more stagnant water where you can hear a lot of frog activity and hopefully salamanders and things like that will come back uh, there and then the stream hopefully will stay more oxygenated and less of this algae will be here as it cools down so we're gonna explore it a little bit we're gonna see if we can find any fish activity and I'll point out any interesting features we see along the way because this is all man-made here uh, this was totally scoured clear and the water was completely stopped so for a few months there there were no no creek, no water, period. So let's continue and let's walk around here and take a look at what they're doing. Now, they're also planting a lot of these alders. And the reason they're doing that is because this was a creek. And the creek brought all that sediment downhill for years and years and years. And then it turned it into this flat area here, which became a big old swamp or lake uh, and that lake sat here for maybe 65 years 70 years as a private lake well all that debris coming downstream is nitrates nitrites ammonia all that that nutrients type stuff and it has built up it's part of the reason why there's algae in the river it's also part of the reason why there's such lush growth of natural plants in the river too um, <clears throat> but the alders are one of the few trees here that are actually going to take the nitrogen in the ground and make it accessible uh, in the soil again so they are nitrogen fixing uh, plants which is pretty cool 
So I'm really happy to report that we actually found some baby salmon. And so these guys are just hanging out. It's either going to be Chinook, uh, Coho, or Cutthroat uh, salmon. And the Cutthroat being the ones that stay in the river. But excited to see them here. Alright, so what I want you guys to notice is all the colors in the creek. Now, there's everything from old millstones. That's probably an old piece of an old lumber mill that sat on this creek or even the old dam that they broke up but there's also big old pieces of jadeite quartzite that's that jadeite it's got a green color to it when it's wet also you can see serpentine and olivine uh, you can see basalt granite uh, all sorts of quartz including uh, crystals and things too but as well as sedimentary rock diorite and it's very unique in the Puget Sound area and in glacial areas to find this mix because in the uh, substrate, in the soil, and here we are looking out again, by the way, looking back where we just walked from, this was all a lake. This was all underwater to about, this This was an old trail that came down to the lake and the, the lake water line was about there a few years ago when they started drying it up already you can see the mineral deposits the iron that is uh, coming from this hillside up here and depositing on some of the rocks whereas you don't even see it just right up here so you can tell it's very specific where these veins of oxidized iron are coming from and that is all crushed up in all those different kinds of colors of stone and things are because of the glaciers that were two miles tall here I mean can you imagine that like two miles another 10,000 feet of ice above us and that weight literally carved out stone for thousands of miles as they slid down through and it literally carved out the Puget Sound but in its wake it left all these different rocks and they all got weathered in streams and in erosion and you know volcanic floods of lahars of hot uh, ash and debris flowing downhill from the mountains and uh, you know it's been such a mixing pot geologically and we get such a unique and diverse uh, geology here even if our biology doesn't have a super wide diversity in much other than salmonid species. Over here, you can see that there is quite the life uh, rebound happening here. Even though they scoured this creek to the bedrock and to all the glacial till, which is basically all that rock and debris, and sometimes you'll find ash and sand mixed together from different volcanic eruptions. You'll find rock that's a conglomerate, like this one, that's like sandstone and siltstone. You'll find stuff that'll have fossils in it that's 48 to 58 million years, kind of a 10 million year period. And you'll also find stuff that has bands of, like this one, uh, calcite or limestone or whatever that may be that is eroding away at a different rate than the rest of the quartzite that's there so you get all sorts of interesting volcanic stone here that formed in the Olympics and the Cascade Mountains on either side of the Puget Sound and then the glaciers came through many different times and they dumped this rich soil that they literally scraped the bedrock scraped the topsoil scraped a mile thick of earth in some places out all the way from up in canada different mountain ranges and brought it down here like a boat wake leaving waves splashing in its passage and you can see the local um, people that are helping rebuild this stream they've actually uh, incorporated ash so they've been burning uh, some sort of probably hardwood around here or maybe even just like an evergreen tree and also they've been including conglomerate limestone stuff like that uh, probably to give a buffer and some calcium to the soil because they're trying to 
literally rebuild a nutritious you know substrate and this was too rich because all of that debris when this was a lake would have settled to the bottom and that's why we're getting algae and cyanobacteria growing out of control in portions of the creek that are slow or warm plus it's summer and that happens a little bit naturally but you're getting these blooms of these aquatic and semi-aquatic plants that normally in Washington State you don't see so prolific and along the edges here you see something that's very unusual which is alder tree 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 alder I mean there's literally thousands of little baby alders and what they're doing is they're taking the nitrogen that's stuck in a form that none of the other trees can use and they're utilizing it and while they're trying to pl plant salal and Oregon grape berry and sword ferns and brack brackish ferns and uh, you know other plants that are native to this region here, bog cranberry, things like that, uh, salmon berry and bear berry, uh, they're trying to re you know reinvigorate this as a native landscape, yet the alders are growing faster than everything else and that's because they have a bacterial relationship at the root level and they're able like I said to utilize all the stuff that was sitting at the bottom of this lake for 70 plus years however long it's been that they dammed this creek and created this lake now we're seeing how long it takes for this stream and this lake bed to rewild itself with the help of humans and I think it's fascinating and we're gonna check in on it every now and then and I know these videos don't really do that well generally but I know some of you do enjoy them and so I want to keep uh, bringing them to you now